Hey, Rich. We're, we're, what time did you say we're starting? I said nine. Wow, you you, uh, you smartly got the buffer in there. Absolutely, I, I smart very smartly put the buffer in there. Live, we're live. Hi, everybody. Welcome. I feel Welcome. like I feel like going old school. Old school. We did we did the new Wolfenstein. Yeah, there's the old one. And here's the oh look at that. That's awful. You're drifting. I know I am. Why are you drifting? That's a hell of a question. Oh, you know why? I know why. Nope. Okay, that's off now. Well, now... It's amazing. Here, hold on. Wait, wait. I bet it has something to do with the controller still being plugged in. Hold on. Oh, oh my microphone's falling. Wait, did it stop? Yeah, I'm gonna unplug the thing. Oh my god, it did. Yep, there we go. I bet the controller was like... Fuck. Fuck. Tilted. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. The controller was like tilted slightly, probably. There we go. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Stream ruined. No, I fixed it. I did it. I did it. All fixed. Right. All right. That, that, that doesn't even... Hey, by the way, that doesn't even count as a technical glitch because we... If the issue is fixed within... I'll say one minute of any technical glitch, that does not count for you bingo players. That's just reasonable? That's reasonable. If we fix the glitch within one minute of discovering the glitch, it is not a technical issue. Boom. Hi, hi, welcome everybody. Welcome to the stream. Look at this old Wolfenstein. Do you even need to aim at them? Eh, uh, vaguely. <laughs> Take that, you Nazi dogs. <laughs> it's very gray? What's very gray? Wolfenstein? No. Look at all these bright colors. It's great. Gray? Is somebody being sarcastic? Maybe. I don't know. Escape Cage says, I beg you, anything but Friday the 13th, the game, it's so boring and horrible, you're so wrong. You are so wrong! We've you had great so streams wrong. with that game! I mean, you're just wrong. We've had a great time playing it. I found, like, one of the re one of the many reasons for the delay of the episode was because I'd, I'd have to jump in-game to, like, grab a clip mm -hmm. of something specific. And then I'd just hang around and play a couple extra times because it's so fucking good! So we we're going classic. It's a little we're doing a little different this time, but oh man, I love I I am in love with Friday the Thirteenth. I'm in a renaissance right now where I I just want to play it. I'm really glad you had an idea to play this tonight, or else I would have said let's just play Friday the Thirteenth. I was I was close to that myself. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know Beefcake. I'm not even gonna bring that up. Um. Now I'm freaking curious. Well, we'll talk about it later. What year was this game released? That's a great question. 91? 91? It's, it's old! 9091? I believe that. I'm seeing a lot of 91s, 92s. For its time? This was mind blowing. This 3D game. <laughs> yeah. Where the camera was like your eyes. Yeah. This was such an amazing concept. This was the first, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know, like, there's. there's well, like, yeah, there's, there's some proto wolf and Some, like, adventure games or something where, like, it was kind of first person, but. Yeah. Yeah, this is the first first person shooting. Id, before they were called Id, they're still working for a company called Soft Disk. Oh, yeah? They made something called, uh, some, something Catacombs 3D. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I remember them. I had those. I had those boxed when I was a kid. I found them at, like, a, I was like a garage sale or some fucking place, and I thought, oh, these are some cheap Wolfenstein knockoffs. I had them in the fucking box. If I kept those, those would probably be worth something today. Absolutely, they would be. I have no idea where the fuck they are. Oh, they're gone. I mean, but I, I own the Catacomb 3D games <laughs> in the fucking box they came in. <laughs> uh, so uh, someone looked it up on Wikipedia. 
Uh, May 2nd, 1992. Yeah. I'm sorry, was that May 5th? May 5th, 1992. Yes. Hunchback Jack is saying, I played the previous Wolfenstein games and they were Isaac-like, top-down roguelikes. Yeah. That's amazing. Hi! That's amazing. That's great. So, uh, but, but in any case, uh, Friday the 13th, the episode is done. It is fully uploaded to YouTube. Uh, once I'm done with the stream, I need to make the thumbnail. Yeah. Which I have yet to make the thumbnail. Uh, but the, the Friday the 13th, the episode is up 45 minutes. 45? 45 fucking minutes. That's long for us. That's, it's a long one. But I think it's, oh, look at that. Look at yeah. how poipal that is. Secret level. That's great. Uh, so yeah, 45 minutes of us talking about Friday the 13th. A lot to talk about, a lot to unpack. Uh, will you guys ever play Player Unknown's Battleground? I don't even know what the fuck it is. To be honest with you, I know the name, but that's it. I have not looked into it that much. I know that's a, it's a very popular game. <laughs> is all I can tell you. I've heard the name, but I don't know anything about it. So maybe, but I don't know. Kill all the Nazis. Yeah, Fucking kill die. all the Nazis! Friday the 13th is Twitch streamer bait the game. Well, it, sure. Here's we're Twitch streamers. One, we're Twitch streamers. Two, oh darn, a game that invites itself to fun and interesting situations. Oh, <laughs> this is all you got. Oh, you got me. Yeah, remember that fun thing that happened? Oh, it's such Twitch bait. Oh, unique and exciting things happen in this game. Oh. <laughs> Get out of town! Get right out of town! Get right out of town! The full color ceiling makes it look like there is no ceiling. Yeah, that's weird. Oh, you gonna stab some dogs? <laughs> oh, that's great. Unique and exciting, Captain Nitpick. Are you telling me Rich driving a, a backwards circle around Jason was not unique and exciting? Was there one Friday the 13th stream where we did not have a good clippable moment? Right? This is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. Remember, all dogs go to heaven. Not Nazi dogs. They don't go to heaven. They chose to serve Hitler. Yep. They can and, all fucking die. And Dog Jesus knows it too. <laughs> He's got a list. Not all dogs go to heaven. <laughs> it's a special place in hell reserved for Hitler's dog. Yep. Didn't they kill the dog when he killed himself? Was that part of the whole? Ava Brown himself and their dog. Oh, their dog was in the bunker? I, I think so. Oh, I, I don't know, yeah. Oh. But really, like, does a dog know? Does a dog know any better? It's, like, it's just a dog. It does what it's doing. <laughs> it's a Nazi dog. I don't care. Yeah, you're right. No, I'm, it's I mean... It's a fucking Nazi dog. Here's the thing. You know me. I barely have any sympathy towards any animal. Like, I'm not going to have extra sympathy towards Nazi animals. I know that about you. I don't... <laughs> you're behind me. Oh, I lost half my health. I forgot how difficult this game could be when it wants. I've been playing it, but I've been playing like a source port and like the Doom engine, not oh, classic. Sure. This is still a source port, but it's a source port built for Wolfenstein. Uh huh. So it's it's staying faithful to yeah. the original experience. 
Yeah, yeah. No sympathy for Biscuit? None. No. Listen. No. Listen, I, I enjoy Biscuit. Uh, Biscuit is a fine cat. Uh, also a useless cat, though, by the way. We had a mouse in our house. And, you know, occasionally we get mice, but, like, they always come in the same way. And so, he, like, I, He would have got him if you didn't step in. No! There was a mouse upstairs in the same spot twice. It was under a hamper. Oh, it's a different one? There's a different one. It was under a hamper. I lift up the hamper, and there's just a mouse there. Biscuit is six inches away from the mouse. Just looks at it. The mouse, the mouse goes into a, into an air vent. Two days later, I go back upstairs, and Biscuit is freaking out again. I lift up the hamper. The mouse is there again, and Biscuit does nothing. Useless, gosh darn cat. Cat, I mean, you know, I'm not, he, he's not a work, Biscuit is not a work cat, you know. He is a, he is a lovely cat because he is soft and he is, um, sociable. When people come over, my cat does not flee. It just rolls over and lets everyone, like, pet its belly, so. It's good in that. It's good in, uh, Biscuit's good in that but I, I will probably have no sympathy when it is his time to pass. Alright, so we playing for, uh, percentages here, or just to get through the game? Probably just to get through the game. I mean, I, I've... You know, how long will it take you to get through the game? Ah, uh, which episodes? There's oh. a lot of this game. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, then get as far as you can. <laughs> Mein Leben? Yeah! Mein Leben! Mein Leben! <laughs> oh, just a pistol. No, I'm restarting, Jack. I'm restarting. Why are you restarting? Wait, what's what's going on? Nothing, nothing. I'm gonna I'm not going for getting all the secrets now. We're just we're just killing everything. Yeah, yeah, kill all the things. Getting through quickly. That's the new plan. Okay, cool. Uh, are we doing homecoming discussions tonight? We don't know. Both Rich we and I have know. seen it. I'll tell you this much. I, I, I kind of like it a lot. I like it a lot. I love it. I loved it. We'll generally talk spoiler-free tonight. Maybe tomorrow at the end of the stream we'll, we'll make a cutoff and do all the spoiler talk. But... Uh, I really enjoyed it. Yeah! Uh, I, I tweeted out I thought it was it was the most faithful adaptation of Peter Parker. Yes. That I have seen on screen. No, no disrespect to Sam Raimi. I will defend the Sam Raimi Spider-Mans, but this, this is more Peter Parker than we have ever gotten before. I've seen people online like, who was the better Spider-Man? A lot of people will, Toby was the best Peter Parker, but Andrew Garfield was the best Spider-Man. No! No. They're the same character! Peter Parker and Spider-Man. Peter Parker is Spider-Man! Yes. Spider-Man is, is Peter Parker with a mask over his face. Yes. If you're if you're doing the character right, they're the same character. Oh sure. Well, and that's why like I will I will forever defend Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. Uh -huh. Because like that's where he was going with the character and I think Toby played that character very well. Some people don't like yeah, the character, but I think he played it really well and that was the direction that they went. Um this new uh, Tom Holland though nails it across the board. Every every little part of it. I haven't seen Spidey yet and scrambling for reasons to watch it. It's very good. <laughs> I It's very good. Yeah, this is, I'm, I'm okay talking about this because this is all spoiler free here. Um, yeah. I I was not excited at all going in. That's true. You said that. I, I haven't been into a comic book store in over like a decade at yeah. this point. I haven't bought a comic book in like over 10 years. Yeah, yeah. I did not really care how they're ever rebooting it again. Tom, Tom Holland looks looks fine. He'll be he'll be great. A movie will be in. It'll be fine. Yeah. It'll yeah. Be fine. I I loved every second of the movie. Mm -hmm. I was filled with joy and wonder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't joy and wonder at the amazing action scenes. It was joy and wonder in the character being enjoyable yes. and fun. Just and you know, in fact, 
so the action seems like there was nothing necessarily spectacular action-wise. No! Which it's is not. It, the movie is very, with the with the plot, with the action stuff, very deliberately down to earth. Yes. Amazingly yes. down very to earth. Very low key. Uh, but you get so caught up in Peter Parker's teenage drama, and that's fucking Spider Man. Because they did it, they did it right. It's not about the save the world or what's the <laughs> villain's plot. It's about Peter Parker's life being disrupted because he keeps trying to be a superhero. Exactly. That's oh, what it's about. Exactly. They nailed it. And they nailed it. So, I mean, yeah, that's... we Like I said, we won't go too deep into it just because we don't want to accidentally get into spoiler E territories, but... Actually, Rich and I unknowingly saw it together. <laughs> Quite by accident. <laughs> Quite by accident. What was that experience like? Huh? Everyone wants to know what it's like to hear Rich Evans laugh in a theater. Oh, okay, so yeah, like... For for any new movie, if I take my kids to it, yeah, I try to go to the earliest weekday screening I can, and that way, like, you know, like I'm not, that way I'm not ruining anyone's night because like my kids are very good in the theater, yeah. But just in case, like, I don't want to go to like I don't want to ruin someone's date night, right? So you know, so we went to a, an early Friday morning Amen. screening of Spider Man. And all of a sudden, and like, I thought I heard it earlier. <laughs> but you know, like some people just have higher pitch laughs. And then, <laughs> and then it was at, it was right at the, it was at the end. There was a, there was a bigger laugh and I definitely heard it. And I was like, Rich is in here somewhere. <laughs> but it was like a 10 AM movie. And I'm like, Rich doesn't get up this early. Why would I be going to a early screening of a film? I, and well, then I figured, yeah, yeah, it, all, yeah. It, it all, it all started clicking together. And then I saw the three and I was like, Hey, I know you. And then, uh, and then Mike ran away as fast as he could because I had shouted in a the theater. <laughs> Mike doesn't like the idea of being recognized. I know, I know. And so that, it was understandable. Lisa was very confused as, yeah. to, as to why he ran away, but, um, I did. I stood up and I said, Rich Evans! There's Rich Evans! I know you! So, no, yeah, it took, uh, it took the kids uh, and the wife to see the movie, and everyone had a great time. Uh, you know. I got some health. There was lots of cussing. There was plenty of cussing in the movie, and at, at least one reference to pornography, which made my children very confused. <laughs> so your father, Spider-Man. Ah, well, but by the, it, it, everything made sense ned his friend character who you've seen in the trailers is great uh michelle the um, michelle michelle that we won't get into anything michelle was all like always funny i loved her in everything like yeah i loved her bit i liked it i like everything's good Michael Keaton's Michael Keaton. I mean, he's gonna be good. He's Michael Keaton. Everything's good. We'll probably do spoiler discussion on Wednesday, sooner, man. We won't. We won't get too into it. Just that we both really liked it. I. I like. I'm. I'm, I'm clamoring to see it again. This is one of the few times I want to see a movie a second time. Yeah. In the theater. Yeah. 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 And I, I didn't think I would give a shit. That's you. That you went in super negative. I went in super hyped. And I, went in, my, I went in super blah. Eh. <laughs> we're doing this that's, again. You know what? We're doing this. My, my attitude was, we're doing this again. Eh. That seems to me that's going in negative. Like you went in negative. But that, I, that's the moral of the story. You went in blah, and we're and we're and uh, and we're converted. I went in hype, and my hype was met. So. Die, you fucking Nazi. <laughs> Kill all the fucking Nazis. My turds are green says I would like to pretend that the vulture is the same character as Michael Keaton from Birdman. Did you ever see Birdman? I'm familiar with it. I haven't seen it. I probably should. It's all right. It's not bad. Uh, that 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 would be very funny. Ah, but now that 
Dylan, Dylan's okay. Every, uh, everything's good. I don't want to get too into it. But everything was good. Why didn't you go see Baby Driver instead? Well, I couldn't take my children to go see Baby Driver. I was upset when I found out Mike and Jay went to see Baby Driver without me. Oh. I didn't really know I would be interested. But, but Rich, you're the comic book. I writer. know, I know. It's like, I'm really doing the Spider-Man, and and you're not gonna ask me to be a part of the. You're not gonna ask me to be a part of half the episode. I would have liked to have seen the movie. <laughs> you're the comic book person, even though you haven't read a comic book in a decade. <sighs> <laughs> I'm sure, Baby Driver. I mean, uh, I I have enjoyed all of Edgar Wright's movies. I have no doubt that I will enjoy Baby Driver. I don't know if I'll go. Uh, I'll get a chance to see it unfortunately, before it uh, comes to video on demand. But Crane Hand Cry says, as someone from ATL, Baby Driver was ATL as fuck. Atlanta? ATL? I don't know. Ah, cool. Uh, my favorite Simon Pegg Edgar Wright film? Probably Hot Fuzz. Yeah. Definitely Hot Fuzz. <laughs> I actually, you know what? I'm gonna take back I've enjoyed all of Edgar Wright's movies, because I actually did not much care for The World's End. No, I didn't either. So... Is that, yeah, I didn't hate it. That was in the... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's how I'm feeling about The World's End. And you know what's been on my list to re-watch forever is Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Never seen it. I remember really enjoying it when it came out, and I've, I've just never gotten around to re-watching it. I, like, I, I want to I wanna know if it holds up now that I'm a little bit older. A lot of people are agreeing that World's End is the weakest. Like, I, I remember, like, my first watch of Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, I was, it was just so exciting, the visual style of it is clean and different and so well thought out and I, I wonder if once you're removed from the from the uh the spectacle of seeing that style for the first time if the movie's any good so i could take the elevator out right now but i really should look for something to first okay do it I forgot how deliberate Wolfenstein 3D is compared to Doom. <laughs> deliberate? I use health fast, and uh, ammo is a concern. Hmm. Alright. Maybe it's because I'm using that fucking chain gun. You know. Eek! Eek! <laughs> Eek! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what are we- oh, sorry, oh, I've been missing a lot of your tips. Uh, Cranehead Christ says, I recently learned that id Software is located down the street from my house. So I drove over there to check it out. I was most excited to see a nondescript office building as anyone could be. Yeah, is that like the current offices they've had? They've- They've moved in recent years, haven't they? Because it's not really the same id anymore. Sure. I'm leaving. <laughs> First of all, your knife is adorable. They are in Dallas now. Yeah, I believe so. Did you guys see that that no clip interview with um? With John uh, Romero, I I don't know why I haven't watched that yet. He lives in like Ireland, 
and has started like a little. He can afford to live where the fuck he wants, for sure. <laughs> well, he started like a little like game space studio over in Ireland, and like a lot of the interviews just him going through his house and looking through all of his old id collectibles. <laughs> it's really, it's really great. Mein Lieben! You died it. I still haven't seen, mostly because I don't care about, uh, they, they just, uh, Noclip, Noclip's most recent, uh, documentary is a three-parter on the most recent Final Fantasy game. Yeah. And apparently it's, a, oh. you know, it's very good. I, yeah, I just don't care about Final Fantasy. But I want to, I've also, I have cared about, this is further back than I thought it was, all of the, uh, games they have made documentaries on before, so I just wonder if they could suck me in. Like, just, oh, it's an interesting documentary about a game I don't care about, you know. Maybe. Oh, not the most recent one, the MMO one, Final Fantasy XIV. Oh. Doc is on 14, the MMO that failed and then relaunched. Oh, okay. Thanks, Pino. Swale. Wow! Get my butt kicked! Get my butt kicked! Uh, yeah, I see that about you. Chuck Fox says, Hello, Jack and Rich. Uh, my favorite part of Spider-Man Homecoming was when Redacted goes to Redacted with Redacted and gets his Redacted, Redacted. Afterwards, Redacted, fucking Redacted. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, we agree, Chuck Fox. Kamaxian 120 says, Hey, Rich and Jack, please discuss the Dom DeLuise story Mike and Rich came up with in Best of the Worst a year ago because it is fantastic. Also, consider... There's, there's nothing to discuss. That's all just off-the-cuff improv. Yeah, and there were other people there, too, helping add to the yeah. Dom DeLuise story. Kind of like I'm fucking chopped liver over here. Yeah, no, there's no, like, it's not like we were discussing Dom DeLuise outside. Cut this. It's not like, it's not like before we felt like I got this great idea for a Dom DeLuise bit. Okay, that, okay. Like, yeah, we write it down like, okay, yeah, oh yeah, like, maybe someone sticks his dick in a fat fold and he gets pregnant. I like it. I like going there. Let's see if we can turn that around a little bit. <laughs> Spider-Man spoiler discussion is Wednesday. We'll do that Wednesday, give people a couple more days to see it. I can only assume literally any second now, Jay is gonna hit uh, public on on a half in the bag. You guys let us know when that happens. Yep. I'm kind of curious. Let's see, also consider one, of, one or all of the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies for review. Now, I don't like them that much. Well, you know what? That would have been an interesting one for you and I to do before this came out. But now, now all the hype is done. I don't, I don't have enough to say about it. Oh, just because you didn't like it? Yeah. Oh, all right. Not even enough to spar? Totally, I don't like it that much. I don't like Toby that much. There you go. Oh. You like it? That's fine. You just don't care? Yeah. You just don't care that much? Nah, that's fair. That's okay. My Laban! Now, Homecoming, it actually feels like I'm watching a Spider-Man story. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, before that, Spider-Man 2 set the bar for me, because, like, a lot of Spider-Man 2 is just him dealing with personal shit. But, you know, Sam Raimi handled it. Well, to be fair, the best part of any Sam Raimi movie is Bruce Campbell, so... <laughs> that's just... Yeah. That's just science. You know, the damage one episode of a TV series can do. I haven't thought about Ash vs. Evil Dead. Like, season three? I have, I, I have not thought about it at all. What do they do in season three? It's just not... It's gone. It's gone. I haven't thought about it until you just mentioned it right there. One, one bad episode. To be fair, it was a really bad episode. <laughs> <laughs> just... And well, it was a really bad episode, and it was the 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 taste left in our mouth, right? Like, yeah. That's yeah. what they finished with. 
It doesn't matter how good the entire cake is if afterwards all you taste is shit. It's the journey, it's the journey, it's the journey. Oh, the journey's so important, it's the journey. What about the journey? How about the journey? Huh? Journey? <laughs> All that matters is the journey. It's yeah. all about the journey. Uh, not, no. I, I, not if you're going to a shitty destination, I guess. But the journey. But the See, journey. It's, so it's really, it's really about the journey. Well, kind of. Can it be about both? I like that. Don't stop believing. Street life. I don't know any of the words. It's fine. I just don't know that much about Journey. Journey is a great band. Eh, maybe. Oh. I don't know. Anonymous says, hey, Wreckers, if you're playing Wolfenstein The New Order, also check out the prequel game they released called The Old I Blood. have it. We played it, right? We didn't play that one, but I have it. It's a DLC for it. Oh, okay. It's very light on story, no cinematic cutscenes, more action focus. That's, there we go. Uh, yeah, I've completely given up on The New Order just because I, I, I can't stand those fucking cutscenes. My Laban! My Laban! Okay, come man 586 says hi rich and jack big fan of all things RLM just wanted to thank you guys for introducing me to several great games XCOM and FTL are hours of entertainment I'd never discover without you guys thanks you're welcome those are some great ones. Those are some fucking great ones. FTL, man. FT motherfucking L. I don't know how long about the XCOM. I know. I haven't heard anything about their uh, their new game in a while. The one that just got announced like a month ago? Well, a couple months ago at this point. It was typical. Usually though, you know, they, they like to, usually like it's good to spoon feed. Your audience, so they so they don't. E three was less like it was like barely a month ago. Was it a month even? That they released they released the uh, the, the trailer before. Are we E3. talking about the new XCOM? No, the 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 new game from the FTL. Oh, see, you even forgot about. It. No, I remember what you're talking about. I just I thought you were talking about XCOM uh, two DLC. Ah, okay. No, that they've been doling out information. I just haven't heard anything about this new game from FTL makers. Mario Mario says, so Wednesday is Spider-Man spoilers and the end is nigh? Yes, that is probably what's going to happen. For those who don't know, uh, the end is nigh is the new game from friend of the show, Edmund McMillan. And Rich voices the main character. Yep. And so we will probably be playing that on Wednesday. Will not be reviewing it. No, God, no. There's no way we can review it. There, like, it would be hard for us to review it, even if you weren't doing the episode, just because we have, like, spent time chatting with him. Right. So. Oh, a secret within a secret. Oh, they love doing that. There's some absurd ones in this game. Yeah. Nice. I'll show you the map to it. When I, if I think about it. <sighs> Into the Breach was the game from the FTL guys, revealed back in February. Yeah, and I haven't heard much from it since it was revealed. Go to, um, just search, search Google. Okay. Uh, Wolfenstein 3D maps, would it be under? Damn. Game facts, that's the game figures. Okay, hold on. Worf. We could, we could, if you want, we could probably put this on the screen to show other people if you want. It might not be that interesting. But you talk about secret within a secret. Ah! Stupid laptop. I, I I remember this labyrinth when I was a kid. Wait, here, let me sit, let me sit. Uh, 
Uh, no, I know they're on game FAQs. Yeah, he, he was a game FAQ one. Um, here, here. Let me, let me, let me, let me, I can, I can, I know what I'm looking for. Visit page. All right. Give me, give me the thing. Give me, give me, give me, give me. I'm, I'm give me, give me, give me. Super rude. Give me, give me, give me. And one of one of the other reasons uh, why the Friday the Thirteenth review is so late is because I've picked up some uh, some extra work and I've quite possibly overbooked myself. Some of that extra work is uh, I'm cutting together a gameplay trailer for The End Is Nigh, which will come out on release day. And it's taking uh, a little bit longer than expected to cut together the trailer, even though it's a fairly simple trailer. But took took uh, took me uh, took me a while to find the right direction. Is that an episode two? I think it's an episode so. two. Oh god damn it! I better find this quick. I mean, you made a big deal out of "Gimme, Gimme, Gimme" the laptop. Ah, yeah, there it is. Project Hornet is still moving forward. Okay. Project Hornet is now in the hands uh, of Oh Bother. You how well can you see you see those little green tiles yeah those little green tiles are all secret doors shut up so you go like uh-huh that's great uh-huh that's ex Bob, that's exactly what you do when you make a game like this just to fuck with people well i think at the end there's like call this number you, you feel like call art call Ardwell, something something i will yeah, yeah that's great that's great i love it's, it it's insane you don't get an in-game map in classic Wolfenstein that you can look at to see what you've explored, <laughs> if I remember right. I could be remembering that wrong, but I think you just, you're fumbling around there in the dark, Jack. <laughs> uh, Lloyd Beats, yes, the prereq episode for Friday the 13th, actually, I'll, I'll probably post it live when I get home. I still need to make the thumbnail for, uh, for YouTube, but it is, I just uploaded it today. It is done uploading. And I, all I need to do is make the thumbnail and, you know, put the description and whatnot. So, depending on when the... I know there's an upcoming Half in the Bag episode. If that goes live tonight... I won't be shocked. Huh? I won't be shocked. I, I'm surprised it's not up already. I, yeah. Uh, so if that goes live tonight, I'll wait till tomorrow to post our Friday the 13th episode. And if it doesn't, I'll post it tonight as soon as I get home and make the thumbnail and whatnot. So, can't you do that now? I could. I could and actually, like, that's what I, I was thinking about stuff to do. I was like, oh, you know what? I'll, I'll bring my laptop and, and we could do some Photoshop tutorials. <laughs> How I make the thumbnails. But honestly, it just doesn't take that long. It, it takes me like five minutes. Right. So, it just wouldn't, that wouldn't kill enough time. So... Excited for Doomfist in Overwatch? Yeah, he looks like an interesting character. He's another he's another melee character. And uh like Rein like Reinhardt. Reinhardt was his hammer. So, you know, well and he does have a gun, but uh, you know, like they're they're de-emphasizing his his little shotgun fist. And he he mainly just has a a big big ass fist and you know he can he can like do an uppercut which is like a big jump for him and then he can like do a falcon punch so he can get to places even though he's a big guy and he looks interesting i i he, he just entered the player test region which is kind of like their their open beta where they test new levels and new characters and uh, I don't, I don't play PTR uh, because I like to wait until until they say it's done before playing it. So. Fucking Nazi! Fucking Nazi! Fucking, Fucking Nazis. Nazis! Fucking Nazis! I I heard that hates game that Terry Crews wanted wanted to do the voice to that uh, to Doomfist. And he is a he is a large, muscular black man, Doomfist. So, Terry. Floor two. Wait, I saved. I saved earlier. Yeah, you overwrote the last one. I saved on floor four. I'm back on two. Oh. This is. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Oh, so they're saying actually you didn't. You didn't say it. 
I went to the thing! I brought it up! Obviously, I didn't know it would be there, but... Must have failed to hit a button or something? Maybe. It's the Nazis. They're messing with you. They are. <laughs> that makes me unhappy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Lol, time for Friday the 13th. Listen. It, it's taking quite literally 100% of my willpower to not play Friday the 13th. And depending on how awake I am when I get home, I will probably play it when I get home. What does the chat want to see? <laughs> no, they, I... I, what is, what I, is the have, chat? What I have the seen chat more see? people in chat happy that we're not playing it than wanting us to play it. Take a poll. Take a poll. <laughs> then, then the numbers will play out. The numbers will play out if that's the case. What? If they don't want to see Friday the 13th. Oh my god, now you guys are spamming F13, F13. Just play play this how long we haven't we've only I'll play this for a bit. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give up on this immediately. No, no. I'm just saying. I want at least an hour of Wolfenstein. Yeah. Because that's a nice YouTube No, I like shot. Wolfenstein. Yeah. At least an hour. I need that in my brain. Well, because you know, be, because it was a late stream, I didn't wanna like bring my computer and take all that extra time to for us to do our are killing. I, I can't bring myself to play on uh, Can I Play Daddy difficulty. Oh, yeah. I can't bring myself to do that. <laughs> no. I have, I have enough pride. Just enough. Just, just enough. Just enough. <laughs> Not a shocking amount. Right. You know, I had a, I had a great experience on Friday the 13th uh, yesterday. I had... That's every time that game gets played, something right? amazing happens. I had, I had spawned really close to Jason's shack. Yeah. And I was, I was the nerdy girl. And I say to myself, ah, you know, fuck it, I bet, I bet he's out laying yeah. traps right now. So I quick hopped in there, grabbed the sweater, and hid behind a rock. Yeah. And then Jason shows up and he looks around and he can't find me. Because <laughs> his uh, his sense hadn't uh, hadn't spawned yet. Yeah. So then he leaves and I got the sweater. And I noticed some people were pounding on him pretty hard. I was like, shit, I wonder if we can get his mask off. So I start talking to people. I find a little group. I find a little group of people. And I was like, hey guys, I see you guys are hitting Jason pretty hard. Do you want to go for a Jason kill? I got the sweater already. And they're like, all right, how do we do a Jason kill? Like they had never even yeah, heard about yeah. it before. So I lay it out for them, and you know, like I think at this point, like Jason was chasing a car far away, so like he, he was he was nowhere near. So I was like, okay, here's what we gotta do: we have to beat on him enough to knock his mask off. As soon as his mask is off, I need to press a button to stun him with my sweater. After I do that, someone needs to hit him with a baseball bat to knock him to his knees. After that, Tommy Jarvis needs to hit him with a machete. And the people in chat go. No, really, how do you kill Jason? <laughs> and I was like, I swear to you, this is how you do it. It's purposefully convoluted and very difficult. And they're just like, this sounds, it sounds like you're, you're, you're playing a joke on us. And I was like, no, let's do it. And we failed, of course, because it's really difficult, but. Jack, you are a liar. You have only played 10 hours of Friday the 13th since last stream. I know! And that 10 hours should have been- Jack has two kids! <laughs> How much time do you think somebody with two kids has to play video games? None. No, like, and that 10 hours should have been spent editing the episode. It should have been spent working on the End is Nigh trailer. It should have been spent working on the two other projects I'm currently doing. Because, you know, I have an, uh, you know, yeah, I have kids, I have another job, like, I should have spent that 10 hours doing anything else, but I spent it playing Friday the 13th because I think it's such a good game. Jack has three kids, no, well, no, I have two, well, if you count Biscuit, but Biscuit doesn't take a lot of work. But, but it got it got it gets extra dicey sometimes when I need a specific clip and it's like I'll just go back into the game and you know try to get someone to kill me in this specific way because I really want I really want you know a spear a, a spear through the head clip 
Ah, uh, well, okay, I got it this time, but maybe I could just stick around. This seems like a good group. <laughs> oh, yeah, don't forget to save. Overwrite, right? Did that not overwrite? Save. Save at this position. Yes. Did I have to why? Oh. That looks like where we are. Okay, All right. Great. All right. We're, we are saved. Presumably. Why are we doing a straw poll? It's, it seems like people are okay yeah. with Friday yeah. the 13th. And yeah, and I mean, I'm okay with it, too. Um, because it makes for good streets. It, it always does. It always does. It always does. Uh, yes, Gavin, on Wednesday stream, uh, usually what we'll do for, like, spoilerific streams is, like, let's say we start the stream at 6 o'clock. Yeah. We'll, then we'll say, okay, after 8 o'clock, it'll be all spoilers yeah. for Spider-Man. Like, we'll, we'll still give a couple hours or as much time as we can to non-spoiler talk. And then, yes, we will make sure we say, hey, super spoilers and, and all that. But we'll, we'll give it time. So don't worry. Still come to the stream. Talk. Just, just as vaguely as possible. No spoilers. Loved it. Loved it. Me as well. I, I loved it. I, I'm actually, like... I, I, I would be willing to pay a babysitter to go see it again in the theaters. Like, see, you know, my, my kids are good in movie theaters, but it's still in the back of my head, like, they're there, right? Like, I can't 100% focus on it. If, if you're a fan of the comic books, mm -hmm. this is the first time we have really seen a Spider-Man movie. Absolutely. Uh, especially the uh, the Ultimate series. This was this was very yeah. This was very Bendis Bagley early Ultimate Spider-Man, which I really enjoyed. So I have one noteworthy thing to say about it, but it veers into spoiler territory. I think I know what you're talking about. I think we talked about yeah. that a little bit after the movie. And, and it's 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 more so something that's different, more so than something that's terrible or bad or doesn't work. It just yeah. well, they, they took this in a different direction. Oh yeah, no, and I think that 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 will lead to a really good conversation. And and someone was someone was asking like, what's particularly noteworthy or different about the film that we're so worried about spoilers? And it's it, that's if you just haven't a, seen a film, you you don't want to hear anything. Sometimes. Right, right. The sometimes sometimes in fact often the less you know about a movie, the better that movie going experience is. And so that's why we're trying to be as vague as possible. Like, you know... It's just fucking polite, man. It's One, it's just polite, and, you know... <laughs> Blah, Bendis. That douche gave us Riri yeah. Williams. I don't know who Riri Williams is. I don't know who Riri Williams is, but... L listen, Bendis... Bendis' is stick got old after a while. And Bendis... I, I want to say currently Bendis is writing 87 comic books. That man writes so much that not everything is going to be gold. The, the, <laughs> the first the first year and a half to two years of Ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah. Fantastic. Listen, and listen and to Rich Evans. then he he just he, he became Brian Bendis. He, everything. <laughs> It's the most dramatic thing that's ever happened. Every every fucking story yep. arc was yep. more fucking melodrama than you could shake a stick at. Yep. And Ultimate Spider-Man was no longer fun to read. It became a chore. It became yep. miserable. Well, be, like the whole thing is like we're ramping up everything, and, and we're, we've ramped up everything so much. Fuck it. We got. I guess we got to do the Clone Saga already because we're ramping up when yeah. we fuck things up. <laughs> Spider-Man isn't just about the lows. Spider-Man's it's a roller coaster. It's the ups and the downs of Peter Parker's life. But yeah. after after year two, Ultimate Spider-Man was straight downhill all the time. <laughs> oh, it's so miserable <laughs> and so dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Everybody Peter Parker ever knew or loved is now dead, and now so is Peter Parker! This ain't your grandpa's melodrama! <laughs> the human misery is unbearable! <laughs> sure, Peter Parker's parents are dead, but maybe they were evil scientists! Pew 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 pew! 
<laughs> Gwen Stacy died, and now she's a blood monster. Whoa, 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 what? <laughs> that's I forgot about that. That's true. Yeah, they turned Gwen dead Gwen Stacy into a blood monster. <laughs> Gwen Stacy into fucking carnage. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. You know, it became miserable. It did. It did. It did. I, I stuck through it, through the full Bendis Bagley run. I, I don't know I'm if I made the full Bendis Bagley run. I'm not saying I enjoyed it. I'm saying I stuck through it. I want to say it was 112 issues, which is the longest artist's writer collaboration in comic book history. No. I want to say that's true. I want to say I've read that somewhere. Dave, Dave Sim and the guy who did the backgrounds in Cerebus has to have that beat. Gerard. They have to have that beat. It was the longest for Marvel. Maybe the longest for Marvel. It, it, beat, it beats Stan Lee and Jack Kirby's run on Fantastic Four. Okay. But I don't, I don't think it beats Cerebus and whatever 200 issues it was where he was working <laughs> with his background artist. Is a background artist different than a main artist, or...? Yeah, they, the service did, did this really weird thing where Dave Sim, I guess, just wasn't good at or didn't like doing background. So, Dave Sim would write it, okay. and he would draw the characters. Um, and then this other guy would come in and draw literally everything else, and it was fucking beautiful. Okay. Beautiful and highly detailed sure. with his with his cartoon characters in that world. Yeah, okay. Rich is talking about the comic book Cerebus. And so, I, I, technically, that's still a write, writer-artist collaboration. Yeah. Um, I was talking about the Brian Bendis, Mark Bagley run of Ultimate Spider-Man, which I had read was the longest writer-artist collaboration, but that could have just been in Marvel history. And what about what about just somebody who's doing it all of themselves, like uh, Savage Dragon? They're in like the one fifties now. But it's just one guy doing but, the art and the writing. Right, but that's not a collaboration. No, it's not. That's, that's, it's not. That's just one guy doing doing a thing. I understand. <laughs> that's true. I heard that uh, Stan Lee's wife, Joan, passed away. Aww. At 95 after 70 years of marriage. Amazing. Amazing. Stanley won't be long. That's usually the, That's the trend. That's usually how this works with older couples. It's usually the trend. Unfortunately. Sweet. In some way. They can't, you know, these couple, old couples can't go on without each other. Right. Right? No, and you know, like, it's it's been really fun reading, like, some of the, some of the behind-the-scenes story with, with her, where, you know, apparently Stan was all ready to, uh, to quit. Uh, writing comics at Marvel. You know, he was done, he didn't like what he was doing. And it was Joan that convinced him, just like, you know what? You you hate this because you're not doing your own yeah. ideas. Just make whatever you feel like making, and that's when he created the Fantastic Four. Which kinda changed how Marvel did their business, and you know, created the legend, so. It made Marvel Marvel. <laughs> right! So, so you know, she is she's directly responsible for how we know comic books today. <laughs> my my It's true. Fantastic Four started it all. Started it all. But they're boring pants. I I think they are. I do. I don't I don't much care for the Fantastic Four. And that's okay. You don't have to. Behind every great man. That's true. At least in San Luis. Let's see here where are we? I'm kind of glad that uh, Jack Kirby wasn't around long enough to see them turn Captain America into a Nazi. Oh, right. I have, I like, I'm not reading that particular universe. Do you know he was Jewish? Oh. Who? So that's like Jack Kirby. So oh. Like a, that's like a double kick to the nuts. Right. We're, we're turning your Nazi slaying badass into a, a Nazi. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Sorry, Jack! 
You know what? I'm sure it sold like 10 more issues because of the controversy, so that's all we care about. Ay, ay, ay. A, a Nazi? I thought he was just part of Hydra. That's that's what Hydra is. Hy Hydra is a, a, a wing of the Nazi. You can you can you can try and distance Hydra from that all you want. There's there's ties. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. There is. Oh no! There people are saying no. It's sold like shit. Well, great. Get your shit together. Get your shit right together. Didn't they turn that storyline in part of some kind of mega crossover event? Was that when the universe exploded? No. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know what? Uh, watch me... Uh, like, I read several Marvel comic books right now, and I have trouble keeping track of who's in what universe. I'll be honest with you. All I know is a while back the world exploded, and some people were saved, and some people weren't. And... They, they did a reboot. Marvel's... Like, oh God, 40 year, 50 year old continuity is now dead. Yeah. They're, they're DC fucking it up. Yeah. Yep. But new Marvel is still shit. Uh, I don't know which one is which, you know. I tried to read, because, you know, I still read Miss Marvel, which I still really enjoy her books. And I picked up a few books here and there. And Miss Marvel is in a new group called The Champions. Okay. It's, it's Miss Marvel, um, Miles Morales, Spider Man, Nova, Kid Nova, uh, Asian Hulk, and uh, The Vision's Daughter. Asian Hulk is weird. Asian Hulk is weird. He's, you know, a, a genius, and the fact that he can, like, he's still smart when he's the Hulk, and he can turn back and forth. I don't quite get his shtick yet, but I've only read him in The Champions. And, it like, to me, it was an interesting premise. She left, uh, she left the Avengers because she was sick of fighting the bad guys and then leaving the mess. Yeah. For the neighborhood. And she's like, fuck you guys, I'm gonna start my own team where, you know, we stick around to clean up our mess. And I was like, oh, I like this idea. And she's like, we're gonna, we're, you know, we're not gonna be so concerned with punching the guy as we are with changing the world. And then you read a couple issues, and you realize that you kind of like them when they punch the guys. And it's like, eh, can you maybe punch, punch some of the guys? Maybe? <laughs> it was a, a, a bad message, a poor message. Sorry. You can't have fun. It's all, it's also like... It, it it feels culturally exploitative. Um, I, it's just poor. I think it's poorly written. Is the problem. So I I have not enjoyed the champions. <laughs> right, leftover beef kick. Like you're gonna use diplomacy to resolve our conflicts, but then you realize, oh, it's a comic book, and I kind of want people to punch other people in bigly exciting ways. That's that's part of the fun too. You can have both. So, in any case. So I'm, I'm slightly up on the current Marvel Universe. But then, you know, what... What Earth are you on? They're, they're really big on, on Earth hopping at the moment. Really? Huh? Really? Yeah. Yeah, really. Spider Gwen? Have you heard of the Spider Gwen? She she just did a whole thing where she was jumping jumping through different Earths. And like it's perfectly normal for her. But I don't get Is it. Peter Parker still a billionaire industrial mogul now? Yes. Okay. How's that working? Is that fun? Is that good? Not really. Like, it's it's really hard to sympathize with Spider-Man now that in, now that instead of instead of like trying to balance fighting crime and paying your rent, he's trying to balance fighting crime and doing paperwork. Yeah, <laughs> you know. 
it kind of takes a little bit of the oomph away from what I've always enjoyed about Spider-Man, which is the fact that he's the underdog. Right. Now that he has... Well, they have Miles Morales now, so and Parker is redundant. And by the way, I'm perfectly like... That's why I like Miles Morales. That's why I like Miss Marvel. I like the underdog. And so, not... Him, him like, having a bunch of resources and technology and manpower at his disposal takes away a little bit of his oof. I'll be honest with you. Oh, where's the key? Ah. He's Tony... Yeah, he's kind of Tony Stark, which is fair because Tony Stark is now trapped inside of a computer at the moment. He's trapped inside of a computer that's worn by a small black man. Well, no, he's just trapped inside of, like, computer computer. I thought he was in her suit. Well, he's, you know, part of the computer network. That's So he's in the suit. It's funnier to say that he's in a suit that's worn by a small... Oh, okay, sorry. It oh. sounds so absurd that it's funnier. So, you know what? And I thought you were asking a legitimate question. No, 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 no. I was just trying to make it sound goofy. <laughs> sorry. I ruined that. And, and to everyone, I'm sorry. Tony Stark is an AI. Yeah, like he died. Um, he died, but he's really just trapped inside of a. a Look, it's not a good time to be a classic Marvel character. Nope. No, they're having a shit run at the moment. Marvel wants to get all those old white guys out of there. <laughs> <laughs> They're, they're the wrong skin color. Yeah, they're, they're, they're trying to change it up a bit. <laughs> Mar Marvel's saying like, "Hey, may maybe we can." I don't. I don't, I don't mind adding the form. new. I just don't think you need to shit on the old. But well, you don't need to shit on the old. What what needs to happen is there's no room for the new if the old is still around. Captain America is a Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Don't tell me they're not shitting on the old! Well, alright. There you got one case where they're shitting on the old. You need, you need room for the new, is, is the point. And so then do you just end the old? You could you could have a Captain America comic book and then have another new hero. You could. You could. Of color! The I, I think this is Marvel trying to uh, have their cake and eat it too. And it's not quite working out. Just have the old characters, you know, retire. Or or they go on adventures with the new characters. You could do that too. You could do that too. This isn't rocket science. You know, quite often, before Civil War Part 2, Captain Marvel, former Miss Marvel, would often come out and hang out with new Miss Marvel and they'd do right. super stuff together. Right. It can be done. I, I'm agreeing with Richard. Now we better shoot Bruce Banner in the head. <laughs> well, that's what what happened in the Ultimate Universe is Peter Parker just straight up died. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then Aunt May made me glad I stopped reading. Yeah. Then Aunt May gave his web shooters to Miles Morales. But then it's okay because that universe exploded. But Miles Morales jumped to our universe. Chobb says, old cranky men whining about a market that's becoming stale trying new things. Oh, well, no, not, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm in for, I'm in favor of the new things. I, look, I haven't general. read a comic book in 10 years. I don't really care that much. Right. We're just, we're talking about it. We're just, we're just having a discussion and it's cool, guys. It's cool. Every, everybody be cool. Aunt May, AKA the Silver Streaker. Yes. <laughs> Where's the geriatric hero? Where? Let's have the silver streaker. Make, her, make it happen, people. Hashtag silver streaker. <laughs> the ultimate universe, like, I, I say exploded, but I just, I, I don't think it's around anymore. The ultimate universe. I, I don't think your use of explosion is that awful. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, then there you go. 
they they did the exact same thing Crisis on Infinite Earths did. They, all of the mul Marvel multiverse got destroyed one by one. Mm -hmm. It's the exact same storyline of Crisis on Infinite Earths. Oh, shit. Except for it didn't, because all the other Earths are there, are still around. In Marvel? Yeah. I don't I don't, I don't know how Secret Wars ended. I don't know. It's all it all sucks. It all sucks except for when it doesn't. I'm really enjoying um, something that I picked up for my kids because I thought they would enjoy is Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. And I've been reading it and it's adorable. Yeah. It's, about, it's about a little girl who's a genius that befriends a big fucking dinosaur. <laughs> She's like low rent Tony Stark. Like she has little inventions and shit. Yeah, yeah. And like she just she hangs out with a with a dinosaur, and they go on adventures. And it's like this is great. <laughs> this is great. So I've been really enjoying that. Yeah, she's Data from the Goonies. Like how he had all those little like uh, contraptions. Okay. So she you know, like she's a super genius, and she has a bunch of contraptions. And then she meets a dinosaur. Uh, who like traveled from the past, and a group of cavemen who came traveled from the past with the dinosaur started a caveman gang <laughs> in New York, and they had to stop. It was right, exactly. It was great. <laughs> no! Tell me, I saved on floor six. Floor five. Ow. That's not so bad. Wolverine's still dead. He might be dead. I don't know. Who oh, cares? no, there's a website called Is Wolverine Still Dead? Question mark. Oh, yeah. And then the, the website, it just exists to keep track of whether or not Wolverine is still dead. If you go there, the website currently says, Yes, Wolverine is still dead. <laughs> <laughs> but is he? <laughs> yes. Is he dead? Yes. Hold on. <laughs> like I said, it's not a good time to be the old gang in, in Marvel. Is Wolverine dead dot com? Hold on. I can't believe <laughs> this is real. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Wolverine is still dead. <laughs> what? First of all, he's not the moral center of the Marvel Universe. I think there's some hyperbole going on there deliberately. Uh, he's been dead for 143 weeks? What? They killed him a while ago. Did they? Yeah. Oh, shit, I, uh, that's how out of touch I am. I love it. I love it that that's a website. This game has dogs? Yeah, it has Nazi fucking dogs. The, the same guy who made the website did DC do something stupid today. And it, is it, does it just say yes? I think it says it's currently been 61 days since DC has done something stupid. I want to go to there. Did DC do something stupid today? <laughs> has DC done something stupid today? Dot com. Let's see here. DC is at an all-time record of 127 days without doing something stupid. At 127? That's what it's at today. Let's see, what did they do stupid? A writer made a bad tweet or something. There's some kind of sexual harassment scandal going on with DC. Oh, Jesus. That might be what the tweet is related to. That could be. Uh, yeah, apparently a writer made a dumb tweet, and that was the last thing DC did something to. So, you know what? That's not so bad. Yeah, that's not so bad. Good on you. Jack is still an internet novice. There's just so much internet, people. There's just so much internet.
Oh, Jack, that is the record. Oh, I get it. So the uh, 127 days was the record. They're at 61 days currently. But what did they do? So, what did they do? Stupid. So the last. Let's see here. The last thing they did that was something stupid was Nightwing the New Order. The titular character Nightwing will command an army tasked with hunting down the last of the remaining superheroes. Yeah, that sounds like a dumb one. Yeah. There you go. That's pretty stupid. Found a Marvel version of doing something stupid, yeah. Jack, according to that site, Batman and Batgirl have a sex scene in the Killing Joke. Yes, Th that that was that was something incredibly stupid that DC did. Yeah. Barbara Gordon and Bruce Wayne totally get it on in the Killing Joke animated movie. Makes it really hard to sympathize with Batman. Yep. Like a, like a like a teacher fucking one of the students. That's not cool, man. Not cool at all. Yes, this is true. This is a true thing that happened in the in the animated The Killing Joke movie. And then they tried to explain it away in the worst fashion possible. Now we're giving we're giving her more character. Ah. Mark Hamill did do the Joker voice in the Killing Joke animated movie. Yeah. That was unrelated to the creepy Batgirl sex sin. Right. I mean, I'm sure he read the script beforehand, so. True. Well, he really wanted to do the killing joke. And... <laughs> His vocal cords aren't going to last forever. Maybe someone can take uh, those words and animate it better. Yeah, well, that's the hope. That's the hope. Like you have the raw material now. Yeah, that's the important thing. Hang on to those recordings and give it to a you know a, a team of animators that that aren't on a budget of twelve dollars, and you'll really be good to go. yell at me to save every every level just yell at me save there you go uh, all right let's see what we got here we have a uh, crane hand christ says what did you guys think of sam raimi's drag me to hell I haven't seen it I haven't seen it thought it was nice uh, that he could do something of a that he could come off the clusterfuck of spider-man 3 and make another great horror film I think at this, I mean, Sam Raimi could make a good horror film in his sleep at this point. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't see it. Uh, I'm a fan of his and just never got around to it, unfortunately. <laughs> Anonymous says, hey, Rich, I'm a big fan of, st I'm as big a fan of stealth as you are. My favorite series happens to be Splinter Cell, and I've never seen you mention it. Have you played it? No, I I have not. Oh. It always seemed like uh, the, the linear thief. The Is it, yeah. Isn't Splinter Cell very... It's very linear. Yeah. Yes. Very linear. I've played them. They're fine. I, like, here's the hallway, and this is the call, the, the alcove you have to hide in, so the, and it's, it's all it's all very planned out how you get through, and it's not more open-ended. That's what I remember from Splinter Cell. Yeah. And, and the guards are on a very um, specific pattern that you can figure out immediately. See here, Frogwater says, Hey, Jack, thank you for the inadvertent recommendation of a love supreme. Is that, you mean the jazz album, a love supreme? Uh, check out Interstellar, Interstellar Space sometimes, a pop album by comparison. Also, you'll have to speak up. I'm wearing a towel. 
LOL, fuck my cock. Oh god, this is hard, Jack. I'm sorry that you're no good at the game. I know. I know, I'm no good at the game. Yep, Coltrane. Oh, good, Coltrane. Well, yeah. I remember that. I, I got I got a little too enthusiastic about jazz albums after uh, after the other jazz album that I got and, and I, I, I delved into a Love Supreme and I did not care for it as much as the other jazz album I got. I don't think I'm dodging enough. Uh, oh sure. Keep assuming aim is important. <laughs> when uh, I know in this game it's really not. No, no. You just have to be kind of facing the direction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, Jack, what do you think about sitting through another 17 comic book movies over the next 20 years? Marvel boss calls... They're as good as Spider-Man. I don't care that much. I... Guardians of the Galaxy 2, you know, they can be good. <laughs> here's here's the thing about me. I enjoy comic books and I enjoy action movies. So any excuse for more action movies, I'm going to be okay with. And I like comic books. I'm I'm okay with this trend. And like Rich says, if they're good, fuck it, who cares, right? I didn't care for Guardians. But who? I mean, if, they're good, if they make if they make good movies, then who, who the fuck cares what they're about? Let them, let them do what they want. Let them do what they want. I've heard a lot of people talk about superhero fatigue, but I've only found myself enjoying them in the last few years. Didn't like the earlier MCU films. That's the thing, you know, like they're, they're still pacing them out relatively, you know, loose, you know, a couple of years, but... I, I think we're only going to hit the real fatigue once the indie studios start dumping theirs as well. Like, you know, right now, we got a, we got a glut of Marvel, uh, an occasional DC, and soon we're going to start, like, with the indies. Like, I, I heard, I just heard rumor that, like, the Spawn movie got postponed again because Todd McFarlane is a jackass. And people didn't realize that he was that big of a jackass. Oh, he's a jackass. Of course. Uh, and so, like, once, you know, once we start getting... Once it starts turning into an every week situation, then we'll have a problem. But right now, it's going to be fine. Valiant. Oh, I'd love... I'd love an Archer and Armstrong movie. That would be wonderful. That would be great. Movie. Just an, an, an immortal... Uh, uh, a, you know, a John Goodman-esque immortal demigod-esque being. Cherub-esque. And and the unstoppable assassin who has been trained from birth to kill him. They meet up and join forces. That's a, that's a great story. <laughs> that's 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 a superhero buddy cop. That'd be great. That would be fucking great. Or a uh, a Harbinger TV series. I don't think Harbinger you could do in a movie because there's just there's that's a lot of a slow burn. But I, I enjoy Harbinger as well. <laughs> Every, uh, you know, Justice League. Everybody, please keep. All enthusiasm in check. Please. Wonder Woman's a good movie. Joss Whedon has been tasked in finishing the movie, but please remember it has already been mostly shot. By Zack Snyder. All enthusiasm needs to be kept well in check. Eh. Eh. What? 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 What now? 
Three or TK, I disagree with you. Wonder Woman is a, is a good movie. I enjoyed Wonder Woman. You did something dumb? Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, Justice League does not look good, and and any hope, you know, we get from Wonder Woman being good or Joss Whedon taking over in the final stretch needs to be checked because it, it doesn't mean anything. It just doesn't mean anything. You know how old Wolfenstein is? How old is Wolfenstein? You know those treasures I keep finding? Yeah. They do nothing. They're just there to increase your score. Okay. Because, you know, video games, people care about a score. Of course. What's your high, what's your high score in Wolfenstein? <laughs> okay. Like, if you get a high enough score, do you get an extra life? No. <laughs> really? That's great. That's so great. Tardcore is disagreeing though. The Tardcore says you do get uh, lives after a certain number of points. Yeah, I mean, you start with your pistol and I don't want to find the weapons all over again. Oh. Let's just keep saving sure. properly. Okay. Alright. You do what you do. Have you ever watched a movie you loved in theater but started hating it the more you thought about it? No. I'll tell you, I came, I came out of Guardians 2 kind of mad. This is probably not the example that people want. Yeah. But I came out, I was like, yeah, yeah, it was all right. Kind of mad. And the more I thought about all of the problems I had with it, the more upset I got. Okay. You know, just thinking about some of the clunky dialogue, the, all of the tell don't shows. It, 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 it bothered me more and more. Um, I, I remember coming... What was the... Uh, what was the movie where they went to Mars and, and Don Cheadle was there? With Tim Robbins was a ghost of Mars. Mission to Mars? I don't know. I don't know. I think it was called Mission to Mars. And, you know, I saw that in the theater way back in the day when I was going to the movie theater like every other day. And I remember really enjoying it for some reason mission to mars thank you so i remember really enjoying it, it was like, ah yeah mission to mars it's a good movie and then when it came to video like i rented it and it was like hey everybody let's watch that mission to mars i saw that in the theaters that's a good movie and then we, we saw it and it was not a good movie it was not a good movie at all and so that wasn't of the more i thought about it that was just to me forgetting or maybe not paying attention in the movie theater but Thank you, this new subscriber. This new subscriber says, uh, what's that movie where they had a mission to Mars? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what it was. Like, I just remember coming out of it going, oh, that mission to Mars, look, look, fine movie. To be fair, at this point, there's a lot of those movies. <laughs> well, at this point. I know point, you said the title. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, uh, let's see, what do, you, what do you got? You got the Martian? What else is the gun? On Mars. Uh, Ghost of Mars. Uh, and that's about it. Is that about it? I don't there's know. There's more, aren't I'm there? I'm sure there's. I, listen, I, I, I'm not up on my Mars movies. Red Planet, they're saying? John Carter, nice. Total Recall, how could we forget? Yes! Mars needs moms? I don't know what that is. Yeah, the expanse will count, sure. Doom the movie? <laughs> nice. Nice! Does that actually- do they get that much right? Does that fucking movie take place on Mars? It's been a long time since I've seen the Doom movie, I'll tell you- I'll tell you. The truth. I don't know where the half of the bag is. I honestly assumed. 
I am shocked it's not up. That it would be that it would be out the second we click start stream. We we had the we had you know the skit ahead ready ahead of time. Oh yeah. So it's not like it took us an extra day or two to do the skit. Right. Something must have been hard to edit about this. I don't know what. Do you remember the discussions? Were they particularly long? Uh, you know, average. Okay. You know, it's like sometimes, like, uh, that that's another reason the Friday the 13th edit took a little bit longer, is we, we went off on a lot of tangents. And so it was hard to organize everything. And so that, that can ha that can add to editing time. It's just organizing stuff. I knew you were there, you fucking Nazi. <laughs> you, you fucking asshole Nazi hiding behind the corner like a dumbass Nazi. Although, to be honest, the, the thing that usually takes me the longest for previously recorded episodes is just finding the proper gameplay footage. And going through all of my footage, like, oh, I thought I remembered early on in the recording process this happened, but maybe it didn't. Cheeto Moto, you will get it. You will get it. Get what? A, uh, a Canadian, Canadian episodes, Canadian things with Canadians, videos yep. starring Canadians. It will happen. Not one of them. Te technically, you got f three of them. <laughs> well, but we know how you feel about some of those. Yep. Anonymous says I recently bought a body pillow and decided to name it Dick, the birthday boy, Evans. I also wanted you to know I have a really handsome cat named Monty. He's a Siamese and very SM. I don't know what that SM means. Let's see here. Turd Smuggler 44 says just rewatched Dread 2012. Would you have seen that? Yeah. Yeah. For the umpteenth time, love that movie with all my heart. Was Rich's Space Cop voice inspired by Carl Urban's Dread portrayal at all? Keep up the good work. No, because I hadn't seen Dread yet. Space Cop was just inspired by Dirty Harry, more just generic tough guy cop. Yeah, I'm a tough cop. Yeah. Yeah, down on the streets, punk. There ain't no music. There ain't no music down there, you punk. <laughs> it was really just generic fictional cop. Right, tough that, cop. that was just the gag. Yeah. You were, you were monotone, yeah. generic. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Actually, you only recently saw Dread. We've been bothering yeah. you to see Dread for a long I know. time. Tell me. You probably don't know. What? Is that the exact same sprite for the Doom Barrels? Did they just recycle it, just recolor it? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, God. I can't imagine they would they would get away with that. Why? They made they made both games. Oh, did they? Well, see, that's just me not remembering who made what. No, then, then probably. How about that? How about that? If it was the same company, then probably. Id, man. Id. Yep. Uh, much more better says the Doom Barrels had bubbling goo, didn't they? Alright, uh, yeah, they did. Mm -hmm. But you can put goo on top of a pre existing sprite, right? I, I don't know. I don't know how things work. Or stuff. I love the Dread movies, both of them, but I wish they had more. More. A Dark Judges theme movie? I don't know what that means. Dread is great though. The the, the the Keith Urban, Carl Urban, whatever his name is. His Dread is that that movie is fantastic. You ever you ever play the original? The original. One. Wolfenstein? No. Okay. No, I never. I want to see that. Son of a bitch. Just got my help. I'm about to see the boss of the first stage. Okay. As soon as I, I'm gonna get my health back up before I get done. Oh, wait, no, I use the ash shit. Because we're fighting at 90%. Let's see what this is. Oh, oh man. Oh, this looks bossy. After this, I'll be right after this. One. Okay, get psyched. And safe. And, oh, yeah, good idea. Hans Gross. Okay. Yankee Doodle? Yep. 
What? No. What? I was gonna pick up a health pack, but it would've, it would've been a waste. Guten Tag. Ah, guten Tag! Look at that fucker! Yeah, he's got chain gun arms. Look at that fucker, he's great! And... <laughs> oh god, 13. Guten Tag! Ready? Oh! <laughs> Paid <laughs> off! <laughs> Suck it, Nazi asshole! <laughs> nice. Nice. Yay! Alright, look at you! Look at you! <laughs> look at you! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Did we want to switch games? Huh? Do we want to switch games? I'll leave that completely up to you. Why not? Why not? We've been streaming for over an hour now. Yeah. So that, that I mean, that's a great, that's a fine stopping point. We'll switch it up. Uh, hold on. Let's see here. Huff Hearted says, hey guys, my wife just had twins on Thursday. Twins. Holy moly. I'm huge fans of the show, so I named them Jacqueline and Richard. Just kidding about the names. That'd be weird. What's the weirdest thing a fan has done? No comment. <laughs> uh, ma mail us a, a letter recommending Stargate. Someday I will talk about it. Someday. I can't wait. I can't wait for that day. Rich. Right now it's actually too scary to talk yeah, about. Yeah, I know. I'm with it. Le legitimately scary. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with Stargate. Yeah, okay. That's, that's as far as ones I can talk about. Yeah, Stargate. Yeah. Stargate's fair. I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, uh, all of my dealings with fans in the real world, in the outside, have been very positive. Like, most, oh, 90, like 95%. Yeah. 98%, whatever. Most of them. Sure. Yeah, you, you just go up to feel, they shake your hand. Hey, how's it yeah, going? Yeah, yeah. I met, I met one. I, was, I, I had a, a shoot a couple weekends ago, um, and I met someone who was also shooting. We were at the, uh, the 88.9. They were having a, 88.9's a, sorry. 88.9 is a local radio station, and they were having an outdoor block party. And I was there with, uh, with a rapper named Juicebox shooting his performance. And uh, I ran into a fan who was also there shooting a different performance. And so it was like, he, you know, he was a video professional. Hey, how's it going? Uh, chatted a little bit. Like your show. Hey, thanks, man. Yeah. yeah. Very positive. All, all very positive. That rapper, it's Juice Box with three X's. Uh, if you want, if you want to look up, uh, uh, what is it called? Thunder Jam number three. It was a song that came out like fifteen years ago at this point. Yeah, he's a white rapper from Milwaukee named Juice Box with three X's, <laughs> and I love him. I love. I've worked with him a few times now. He's he's the greatest. Juice Box, an adult. He started rapping in Milwaukee. When he was 15, 16 years old, they would actually have to sneak him into bars so he could perform. <laughs> and he was big in the uh, in like the basement scene in Milwaukee. Yeah. And his shtick back in the day was he had a giant ridiculous boombox and he would make all of his beats on cassette tape and then just put a, a microphone up to the boombox. Boom yeah. Press yeah. play and rap over it. It was amazing. <laughs> It was amazing, only because a lot of times he would fuck up the song and have to, like, hit rewind and try to find the spot where the song starts to get. <laughs> it was... It, you know, you, you cra we're crazy kids, you know. It was great. Where is... Gone. That's the... We'll be back, right? Yeah, that's the... I had to use the bathroom. We gotta get the game set up. Okay. I'm gonna put us on hold for a bit. Okay, we'll be back. <laughs>